right, so I had an idea um, for some of our new viewers and just kind of to refresh um, some of the older viewers and also um, we did make a few changes so I wanted to do some updates um, and let you guys know why and what we did. Um, so <clears throat> starting off, I'll flip you around. I'm going to talk about some of the key components, the main things that I feel like, in my opinion, are the most important to having a successful grow. Um, the AC Infinity is definitely, oh my gosh, like just a relief, like a security blanket because you have this ability to see what your humidity is, your temperature, and then you have the control to change the fan as you need. <clears throat> And so I love the AC Infinity. I think having an exhaust is very important. We have a six inch inline um, AC Infinity up here. All right. Um, <clears throat> I feel like an exhaust is very important if you're, um, growing like no matter what the size I would even say a two by two foot tent you would think oh it's so small I'm I'm not gonna need it but I think you should you do need it because you need to have consistent airflow you don't want to have any stale s t a l e stale air so any air just sitting there and you don't want to have any still air so air that's just sitting and not moving not getting any penetration it's there's no flow you want to have airflow. So old stale air, meaning it's just continuously being used in the same tent over and over. You're not getting any fresh new oxygen in there. <clears throat> um, not that your yeah, your plants don't really necessarily yeah, they need oxygen, right? No, we need oxygen. They don't need oxygen. They need CO2. So that's why we have CO2 in there. <clears throat> Sorry, little stoned. Don't mind me catching catching up with myself here. So I think that an exhaust is a very important key factor in having a successful grow. <clears throat> you never want to have still or stale air in your tent. Okay, that's what I live by. <clears throat> Next, um, we'll go over lights. So let me open this up. I like to have wall-to-wall -wall coverage so my light only has about a half inch gap on each side okay so my light is wall-to-wall -wall, all the way through there is no blank space no negative light coming through <clears throat> so um, also with that being said we have a 4x4 four four tent that is 16 square feet. If you don't know how to get the square footage of your tent, all you do is multiply your width by your length. So we have a 4x4, four, four, 4 times 4 is 16. If you have a 3x3, three three, then it's 3 times 3, that's 9. You have 9 square feet. <clears throat> um, I like to have about 40 watts per square foot. Um, so I have 16 square feet. Um, my light is 780 watts. If you take your 780 and divide it by that 16 square feet, that is how many watts you have per square foot. We have approximately 48 watts per square foot. Um, when we were in the five by five, we had three different lights in there and, um, three or four different lights in there. And we had some negative space without any light. We had about four, no, five square feet with no direct light. <clears throat> um, so I did my wattage based off of a four by five area instead of a five by five. And we had roughly, if I remember correctly, um, just under 40 watts per square feet. So not as much as we actually have now going to a smaller tent with one big light. So light, 40 watt square feet, <clears throat> approximately give or take around there, is gonna help you have a successful grow. Um, next, also in, with the light. Our light, all the way at the top right, it's about 
two feet from the top, so it's about five feet. I'm five foot four, and it's just about two inches. Sorry, five foot four. My light is right here, so it's just about even with me. Um, it's about five feet off the ground. We don't move our light, we leave it where it is. That allows your plants to stretch. Um, you do want your light within 18 to 24 inches during flowering. So we do hope that our plants will reach that height. Um, but allowing your light to stay put and not moving, that allows your plant to stretch. Um, it allows for it to actually reach for that light. If you have your light on top of your plant, you know, 12 inches its whole life, it's never going to need to stretch. So it's never going to stretch. It's going to stay short. Now, if you'd like your plants to stay short, if you're in a limited height space, say you only have four feet of height for your plant to grow, and then you have your light in there and your fans, so then you really only have three feet of space for it to grow. <clears throat> then I can understand lower stress training, or keeping your light lower and extending it higher as the plant grows. So therefore it forces it not to stretch and you're gonna get short stout plants. Um, however, I have seven feet <clears throat> of height to, um, to use. <coughs> what? Um, so there's two more feet above me. So there's plenty of space there, right? Um, that allows me to keep my light up higher, my plants down low, and allows them to stretch up. Okay. Um, no. Go lay down. Okay, so we went over exhaust and we went over lights. Um, I would say your next um, key factor would be food. So um, we use Floriflex. Um, we love Floriflex. It always gives us really nice dense nugs. Um, it's really easy to use, very um, user friendly. Okay, so we love Floriflex. If you don't know about Floriflex, go to floriflex.com and read up on them. They're great. Um, so having good nutrient line, whether it be organic or <clears throat> synthetic, as long as you find your your you know comfortable place how you want to grow um i prefer to use floor flex which is a synthetic technically but i flush really good at the end so therefore um i don't have any of that um and that smoking product at the end um <clears throat> i'm not like against organic i know there's some people that are organic and they're against synthetic um i don't think one way is better than the other personally I think as long as you do a flush on your synthetics, then who cares? Um, but I also don't agree with putting in too many PGRs, um, plant growth regulators, because that that is hard to flush out. Um, I've done a little bit of reading on it. I wouldn't say I'm like an expertise or anything, but um, <clears throat> I've done some reading on it, and um, I don't like to use extra additives. Um, Floriflex has a good line. I don't need to really put anything else in it. Um, I also like adding a microbe. It's not a break it or a make it kind of thing though. It's not a key factor, but it's always nice to have healthy roots because healthy roots make healthy fruits. So <clears throat> as long as you keep your roots good and healthy, then your plants typically will turn out really well. Um, so key factors, lights, exhaust, and nutrients. Um, I would say our, our personal fourth key factor is medium. We like using the 66% cocoa and 33% soil because soil that little bit of soil helps retain enough moisture <clears throat> that I don't have to feed three times a day. With only cocoa, you will have to feed multiple times a day, especially in a two or three gallon pot. We like using three gallon pots because we get a good size, good yield, and it doesn't take up a ton of space in our tent. It's not a waste of product. I feel like a five gallon pot, you're kind of just wasting your medium. Um, you don't really necessarily need it. <clears throat> um, sorry, I know I say um a lot. I get comments all the time about it. Um, I'm sorry. So I like having that partial cocoa, partial soil that really helps um, retain enough moisture, but also dry up fast enough so that I can feed about once a day, um, pushing nutrients in and forcing her to get bigger. 
um, faster. Um, which is necessary with autos because you are on a time crunch. They only have a limited um, period in their life. And so once they, you know, surpass their, their time period, there's nothing else you can do. So you're kind of like racing with your plant. Um, so you want to make sure that you have all these key factors in line. <clears throat> I feel like that covers kind of our key factors, but I'm gonna go ahead and let you know, um, give you guys an update on everything else we do have going on in the tent, just so that you guys really get the big picture. So I'm gonna flip you around again. So I showed you this already. Um, I really like this though, because um, it keeps us, you know, being able to acknowledge what's happening in our tent even without opening it or looking at it um 82 degrees is a little warm for us once it hits that we kind of want to make sure that we have a window open and the temperature in the room itself can start to um, go down 36 percent humidity is also much lower than we like um, we like our humidity to be around 45% to 55% at the max and our temperature between 75 and 85 degrees so we like to be able to try to keep it around that um we are in washington state so it is chillier here so typically sorry making you just look at the tent uh, so typically we like to just keep the window open um if it gets really warm we do have an ac and dehumidifier to help cool the room down like our bedroom itself so that way the tent can cool down at the same time um i have a weed dryer magic filter here this um, is minimal light. There is a little bit of light that shines through, but it is like a carbon filter, um, and so it allows less um, dust to get through and no light. Um, we have this vent here, which we don't actually like having open because it is really bright at night, but it's kind of necessary to be allow to allow the airflow from our bedroom in. Um, I try to vacuum this. Um, probably once every other week just to get that lamp film off of there um we have this vent i like using but you guys can't see anything so let's open this guy back up oh also with the light our light does put off quite a bit of heat so my husband Derek decided to put the driver, he unattached the driver and he put it up on top of the tent to help keep some of the heat out of the tent itself. Um, I don't honestly think it's made much of a difference, but that's okay. You gotta try stuff to find out. Um, we do have one large fan in the back corner here. This is just focused on the light, but airflow does come through on top of the plants when they're taller. We only have babies in here right now, so I'm not gonna show you. Um, this doesn't really matter. Um, let me think, what else do we have going on? We have the carbon filter up here. This eliminates smell outside of the tent. So it purifies and filters the air coming out of the tent so that we don't smell it everywhere in our home. Um, <clears throat> we have TNB Naturals canisters here. Um, we like to shake these, I'd say every day, um, but I try to shake them every time I get in the tent. Um, it helps with the CO2 because, as you know, plants need CO2 like we need oxygen. So I like to make sure they have plenty of CO2 so they're not being held back. Um, we have a tiny little dehumidifier there, but I don't even think it's on right now. If it is, I should turn it off, but... I don't think it's doing anything right now. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I talked about SLF 100 or using something equivalent like fish shit, um, MBX grow, um, recharge, any of those. They're all they all work great. They all do the job. Um. I think that covers just about all of our key factors. Um, you can pretty much grow in anything, to be honest. Um, it also does is really helpful to have an enclosed space, though. That helps minimize having dandruff, dust, pet hair, our hair, 
um, and anything else getting into your tent, including pests like bugs or spider mites, um, mildew, powder, powder mildew, mold, bud rot, um, all of those things can, can and will happen when humidity um, or your environment is dirty. So you always want to be sure that your, your tent and your environment is clean um, and dry. Definitely dry. You don't want to have high humidity at all. Um, I think I've just about covered it all. We do like to have our light about 75% or higher. Um, we like to keep it up high. So that, that helps with the light. That's just another part of the light, though. It's not a key factor. So I'd say our key factors, summing it up here, light, exhaust, nutrients. Um, we also use Honor Grow um, pots, um, Honor Cannabis grow bags, three gallons. We talked about why I like three gallons over, say, something bigger. Um, I have tried some at two gallons. Two gallons you have to feed at least twice a day. Um, I really like only having to feed once a day. I don't like getting in my tent more than once a day. Um, yeah, that's really it. Lights, food, and air. Lights, food, and air. Yeah. So those are your three components. If you have all three of those, for the most part, you should have a, su a successful grow. Um, there are a lot of other variables that do make a play, um, such as your humidity and your temperature, um, but that's where your exhaust is going to come in hand and help out with that. Um, so I think I've just about covered it. Um, I will try to do another video soon. I'm just kind of comparing autos to photos and then also comparing um, brain science and honor grow pods. They're both very similar, but I do think they have separate benefits and separate cons or pros and cons. Um, I also do want to compare some TNB naturals with exhale. Um, Mars Hydro Tents compared to Gorilla Grow Tents, uh, SF Spider Farm compared to Mars Hydro. There's lots of different things I would like to go over that are all great, great, great products, but there's always something that makes one of them stand out more than the other. So I would like to get into some of that in some upcoming videos um, if that's interesting to you or if you have something in mind that I could compare um, or talk about, then I'm open to ideas, but those are kind of some of the ideas I have going forward, and I am gonna get serious about it. I know I've been saying that for a while, but I'm on it. So, thank you everybody for checking in, and I will catch back up with you guys later. Um, I hope some of this was helpful to you guys. Um, you honestly can grow in a small space. You don't need a big space. A larger space does allow for your plants to be able to get bigger, but um, it's not absolutely necessary to have a successful grow. We've had lots of successful grows in small, small spaces, and only getting four and a half ounces is still a successful grow if the quality is over the quantity. And that is always our goal, is quality over quantity. If I get a bigger quantity, I'm very happy with it, of course. Like, who doesn't want 13 ounces of fire? But I would much prefer eight ounces of fire over 13 ounces of larf, or eight ounces of good stuff, and then you've got a bunch of bullshit buds. I don't like the bullshit buds. Um, that is why I lollipop. Um, but you don't have to lollipop to have a successful grow. I do think it helps, but um, I would say another maybe possible key factor would be no training, allowing your plants to just grow. I think a lot of people get into this idea in their head that like it's so cool and fun to like train your plant but is it really better for your plant or is it just making the very slow growing process more fun for you personally because I think that's what it's more about for them and they don't realize it than actually thinking about your plant plants are like children they're like my babies and I always want to think of my plant first if it's good for them been great but if it's not good for them and it's only benefiting me then that's not something I want to do 
I always want to put them first with their needs, their wants, what's going to make them thrive and be successful over my own enjoyment. So if that means I have to feed three times a day, then I will do it. If that means I have to, you know, do some research because I'm having problems or I'm doing something wrong, I will do it. Um, <clears throat> And if that means letting them grow and being patient and not messing with them, not bending them, not, you know, stressing them out more, then that's, that's my, my preference. So honestly, I think leaving them alone and letting them grow the way they're meant to be grown is always the better route. Um, but if there are certain reasons and beneficial factors that play into why certain people train their plants. If there's a reason for it and that, you know, that outweighs the bad, <clears throat> like lower stress training in a four by four space. If all you have is a four foot height space or a three foot height space, that's all you can do, then yes, by all means, lower stress training. But if you have a five foot space to allow your plant to stretch and grow as she wants and needs, then that's what is actually better for your plant, in my opinion. <laughs> So, um, I hope some of this was helpful, like I said, and thank you guys for um, watching. I know I just went over 3,000 subscribers on YouTube, so that's kind of cool. So, I wanted to put out some more information and also thank you guys because, I mean, I kind of just gave up on YouTube. But I was like, you know what, let's go over a few things that I think could really help. I hope it did. I hope you guys have a good day. Um, and a good weekend if I do not check back in with you guys before this weekend. Bye.